is a long time. <laughs> hey everyone, I just had a huge epiphany because of Shada Campbell's video called How to Improve Your Watercolor Painting with One Simple Trick. And it is the real deal. And it is very simple, but I'm so excited to share that with you all. And I'm going to share five special effects that you can do with your watercolor. And the grand finale will be this amazing epiphany I had thanks to Shada. So let's get started. The first trick that I use that I have recently discovered too is brusho. And I'm using the color moss green brusho, which actually is more um, mostly burnt sienna colors. And the way that I do it is I wet the whole sunflower where I want the brusho, and then I dip my brush in the brusho powder. It's like a powder. And then I just tap, tap, tap it on specifically where I want these little textures. And I was putting these textures in the middle of the sunflower where I wanted there to be seeds or it to look like there's texture from the seeds of the sunflower. So here I'm tapping it on, tippity tap tap tap. Oh my gosh, don't do that. <laughs> it's my chin. I just, um, I don't like my chin. By the way, I was painting this wet and wet, so you see I also dropped a little bit of bright green in the middle. And that bright green is Daniel Smith, and mine is crumbly, it's old, and so I actually dropped some paint crumbles of that bright green in the middle of the sunflower, and that really had some cool effects too, so that's a bonus effect. But here I'm splattering. And you might want to practice your splatter and different brushes splatter in different ways. And here I'm using my Silver Black Velvet Size 8 Round, which is my favorite brush. I use it for 90% of my painting, but also for splashing. <laughs> and you can splash, you can tap, you can um, hold your brush. What am I doing? Oh my God. You can hold your brush straight up and down and just let the paint drip out of your brush too to get drip. So there's lots of different ways you can splash and drip to get a splashy drippy effect. I am mixing my yellow with a little bit of M. Graham Naphthol Red, my favorite red of all time. And there I am, I'm just dropping it in. The next technique that I want to show you all is the push technique. And I've made a whole video about the push technique. so. Thank you to Judy Breedlove who came up with that name. Got <laughs> it, but I used it in a little different way. And I'm also excited about this on this particular paper. I am painting on Fabriano Artistico Cold Press. And the paint seems to sit on top of it really nicely, more than what I um, am used to with my Arsh Cold Press. And I am thinking of changing my favorite, all time favorite paper from Arsh Cold Press to something else because Arsh got bought by a company and then their quality has gone down and then I just noticed that, that I've been having a lot of sizing issues. Here I'm using the push technique. So the trick to using push technique is getting your paper at the buckling stage and right here it's between glistening and buckling. And what you do is you get tiny little drips of clear water on your paintbrush and you drop them onto your still wet paint that's a little bit drier but not completely dry but it's not totally dripping so you want to wait till your paper is a certain amount of dry kind of like the stage of your paper where you get a lot of cauliflowers that's when you can use the push technique and you're not going to be able to really see the paint reacting because as it dries the paint spreads out and creates these lighter areas so when i show you the final painting at the end or at least where it's at at this point in this recording you'll see there's light areas and you can also do this by splatting uh, bits of just drops of clear water into buckling paper by the way i explain buckling and glistening paper in my calico cat tutorial at a mi about minute 330 so i'll link that here all right the fourth thing that i want to show you all is 
how to use spray bottles to create really cool effects. Now you can splatter, but you can also use these splat spray bottles. And ever since I did the Hacks 2 video where I was like, wow, I wanna show you guys these splatter spray bottles, but I can't find them on the market. Since then, thanks to feedback from my Patreon students and from people on my comments, I have found not one, not two, but three sources of spattering paint bottles, maybe four actually. So uh, Lindy's Gang Magicals makes a spray bottle, she says, has a little bit of a splatter effect. Tom Lynch has one. Holbein says theirs is supposed to still be the splattering kind. They made the original one. It used to be called a dot bottle, but I don't think they do, but I need to play with them some more. And then Everett's Watercolors also makes a spatter, splatter, splat type spray bottle. This is different than a mist. And so you can use these to add a little bit of textural interest, uh, a little bit of, I don't know, I feel like it makes the painting look like it has a movement in it somehow. I just love the effect of splatters. But here I'm just doing a little bit of spraying on this sunflower and I just think it has the coolest effect. If you would like to learn more in depth from me, then go check out my Patreon where you can sign up for Paint Dot, Originals, Art Supplies, Critique, lots of ad-free goodies. You can also join my YouTube membership if you don't want to fool with Patreon, and I've been uploading a lot of things there. All my line drawings are now available to all of my members, and new real-time tutorials are being added every day. Check out my Etsy shop where you can find lots of fun things like these coin purses. <laughs> Okay, you guys, are you ready to hear about my aha moment? I'm so excited to tell you about this. I was so excited to learn it. Thank you, Shada Campbell. <laughs> Basically what she was saying in so many words was not to overwork your painting. Get in, put your mark, get out. If you overwork an area, say a petal, and just keep dabbing and fussing with it, the paint will actually dry to look very differently than what it would have if you had just gotten in, made your mark, and get right back out. That area will, as it dries, look flat, lifeless, so little beautiful watermark type details that we all love about watercolor. Plus that little area will get a little hard edge around its boundary and it'll look really stilted. However, if you just paint your mark, like with one or two strokes, maybe drop in a different color just to add a little bit of aesthetic beauty, then leave it alone. <laughs> then it will have that fresh watercolor look that we all love. Thank you so much to my Patreon members and my YouTube members who make this channel possible. Remember to like this video, and if you want more of all this good stuff, be sure to subscribe. So don't miss out on all that good, clean fun, because let's be honest, most real fun is not clean. What? I was talking about painting. Painting is so fun and it is a dirty endeavor. But also I'll be using clips from a few of my other paintings just to drive my point home and just ask my husband. I like to do that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try one more time. <laughs> How did I not know this? Oh my gosh. How did I not know this, Kitty? Kitty, you have poopy on you. Okay. <laughs> I might cut that out. Be sure to subscribe, comment, use my affiliate links. They're always in the description. I have all my favorite art supplies down there. Down there? Ooh. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye.